In this session, we'll be learning about Python variables and data types. By the end of this session, you should be able to understand variables in Python, variable declaration, what are variable assignments, data types in Python, number in Python, strings in Python, and type conversion. I'm excited to get started and I hope the same from you. Now let's get started with what variables in Python are. So variables in Python are nothing but containers or box for storing or holding the values. Let's say here I have a variable A in which I want to store some value like 100. So I need to just write A equals 100 where A is the variable and 100 is the value that I'm trying to store in this particular variable. Variables are also entities of a program that hold the value. You can imagine variable as a cube kind of box inside the memory that stores the value and the name given to the box is your variable name. So here, if you see, there is a cube kind of box that is holding value 100 and the name given to this box is A, that is the name of variable. So I hope the concept of variables is clear. Now let's go and see how we can have variable declaration. So Python actually has no command for declaring a variable. Now, why do we say that in Python, we do not have a command to declare variable? It is because in Python, a variable is created the moment we first assign value to it. It means as soon as I write A equals 100, at that particular moment, a variable A is created that is holding the value 100. So we don't have to explicitly write the data type of a variable. We don't have to say int A equals 100 followed by semicolon. So that is why here we say there is no declaration of a variable. Instead, we say variable is assigned or the variable is created the moment we first assign value to it. And in Python, variables can be redeclared or reassigned. For example, initially, if I say A equals 100, and after some time, I change the value of A to 200. And later on, whenever I refer to A, it will be holding the very latest value that is 200 and the value 100 will be overridden because that becomes the old value. So in this way, variables are redeclared or reassigned in Python. Now let's see how we can have variable assignments. So any values can be assigned to variables. It can be of any data type. It can be integer values. It can be floating point values. It can be booleans. It can be strings and so on. And it can even be negative numbers as well. Negative integers, negative floating point numbers and so on. There are two types of variable assignments in Python. The first one is multiple variable single assignment. And the second one is multiple variable multiple assignment. So in multiple variable single assignment, as the name suggests, we will have multiple variables and all of them will be holding single value. That is why it is known as multiple variable single assignment. Now coming to multiple variable multiple assignment. So here as the name suggests, we will have multiple variables. All of them will be holding two different values. That is why it is multiple assignment. So we will be looking at the syntax of how to define multiple variable single assignment and multiple variable multiple assignment uh, once we hop to the PyCharm. So let's see what are data types in Python. So data Python has wide range of data types. It has got integers, that is basically numbers. It has got integers, floating point numbers, complex, booleans, and it has got sequences or collections like strings, couples, lists, sets, and dictionary. So in case of integer, floating point, and boolean, what we do is we have a variable and we simply assign one single value to it. But when we work on uh, real-time applications, we need to hold on to multiple data that could come from uh, any database source, any um, RESTful service, that will be a continuous data, right? So for that reason, we need to have sequences or collections. So now coming to the five kinds of data types, we have none type, 
we have numeric types including integers uh, floating point numbers and complex numbers then we have sequences including strings lists and tuples then we have sets and dictionary also known as collections or sequences so set here is an unordered and unindexed sequence or collection whereas dictionary is a map of key value pair hash map of key value pair Now let's see what number in Python is. So there are three numeric types in Python. First one is integer. So integers are nothing but whole numbers that will not have decimal point in them. Floating point value is the number which is not a whole number which will have a decimal. For example, if I say 10, 10 is integer number. And when I say 10.0, that becomes my floating point number. It need not be only 10.0. I can have anything after point. Let's say 10.2, 10.5 and so on. Now, what about complex numbers? So complex numbers will have two things. It will have a real part and an imaginary part. So for example, if I say 2 plus 3j, 2 becomes my real part and 3j becomes my imaginary part where j is the standard coefficient. Now, variables of numeric types are created when we assign value to them. And it is possible to store negative values inside the variables. Now, let's see what are strings in Python. So, let's say we have to store some letters in variable. Let's say I have to store Python or I have to store HKR trainings. So, we'll first discuss what strings are. So strings are nothing but sequence of characters that are enclosed in either single or double quotations. So if you see this example, name and name. So name is a sequence of letters and this name is also sequence of letters. But the first one is enclosed in single quotation and the second one is enclosed in double quotation. So the quotations are not going to make any difference here. That's why this name and name both are same. Now, what actually is string? Anything we write inside the quotation would, bring, uh, would become a string. It need not be only characters. It could be numbers or digits as well. So when we write numbers or digits in quotation, they are no longer known as numbers. Instead, they are interpreted as strings. Now we can display string using print function. So we just need to have print function parenthesis. And inside quotation, either single or double quotation, we can mention our string. It can be a sequence of characters or it can be sequence of digits or numbers or combination of sequence of digits and characters. So for example, let's say string one here is HKR trainings. If you see this HKR trainings in, is enclosed in double quotation. So if I have to print this, I need to write print statement inside the quotation in either single or double quotation i just need to write hkr trainings also we can assign string to a variable if you see here i have assigned this string to a variable and the name of variable is string one so let's see what type conversion means so type conversion here is nothing but type casting that is used to convert one data type into another. Let's say, for example, we have to convert a floating point number to integer. So here we will have floating point number as the source, and we are going to convert that into an integer number that becomes your target. We can also convert integer number to floating point number. We can convert a string, string to a number, either a floating point number or an integer number. So we will have uh, we will be applying this type conversion to most of the data types. Now let's hop to PyCharm and check out the examples of variables and data types. Now before hopping to PyCharm and uh, checking out the example of variables and data type, we will first have an example of variables created on the Python shell or Python interpreter. So this is the interactive mode. Here, what I'm gonna do is, let me take a variable to be x equals 
2. And if I hit enter, yeah. Let me take another variable. Let's say y equals 3. And now what I'll do is I'll say something like x plus 4. So now what should be the value of this x plus 4? We already have value 2 stored in x, right? So x will become your 2 plus 4 is we are adding 4 to 2. So that should be 6. Similarly, if I do x plus y, I should get the output 5 because 2 is stored in x and 3 is stored in y. If I want to individually check what is the value present in x and what is the value present in y, I can say x, hit enter. I can say y and hit enter. So whenever we are directly working on the interpreter, we don't have to write print statement. But when you are working on the IDEs like PyCharm or Visual Studio Code, you cannot directly check your variables like this. You need to say print x, print y, and so on. Here also, I can go into print x. But I also have an option to skip print and directly check the value of variable. All right. So now what I'll do is I'll say x equals 7 and then x plus y. So now what's happening? The initial value of x is 2. Now I have changed the value of x to 7. So whenever I refer x, it is not going to be referred as 2. Instead, it will be referred as 7 because 7 is the latest value. So the value 2 is now overridden by the new or latest value 7 that is stored in x. So now if I hit enter, x is 7, y is 3. So the output is 10. So this is known as variable declaration or variable uh, reassignment or redeclaration, right? So now if I do something like x plus 10 and hit enter, you see I get the output as 17. And also there is something called underscore. So underscore will be holding the very previous immediate output. So here the previous immediate output is 17. So if I hit enter, you see underscore will be holding the previous output. So if I say underscore plus 3, underscore is 17, plus 3 would become 20. So this is how we can have variable uh, assignment and redeclaration or reassignment. Now let's go to PyCharm. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file. I'm going to right click on the project name. Go to new, create a new Python file and name this to be variables. Hit enter. So you see, I haven't given the .py extension because the type of file was already Python file. So the .py extension is automatically taken over here. So here, what I will do is I'll write a comment saying variables are containers or box for storing values. For example, if I say A equals 10 and print the value of A. So 10 is the value that is stored in a variable called a. So let me run this. Because this variables.py file have not been uh, run yet, this is the first time we are running. So I'll go to my run here. I'll click on the second run, or you can do Alt Shift F10 as well. So go and select the file, and there we go. This is the output console, wherein we can see the output 10. I can also store some string value in my variable a. Let's say I want to store some value like John. And if I print a, what should happen if I go and run? Now the value of a will be John and not a. The value, uh, sorry, not 10. The value 10 has been overridden by the value John. So now coming to numeric types. If I say a equals 100, print a. So 100 is the integer number that I'm storing in a variable called a. So this is an int. Let me run. 
you see the value is 100. All right, similarly, if I say B equals 100.0 and print the value of B, so 100.0 here is the floating point value. So here I'll say it's a float. Now when I go and run, you see the output is 100.0. So because it is having a decimal point and it's not a whole number, that's why it's known as float. Now let's talk about complex numbers. So when I say C equals 2 plus 3J, so as I already mentioned, complex numbers will have two parts. One is real part, that is 2 is the real part here and 3J is the imaginary part where J is the standard coefficient. So now when I go and do print C and run, you see the output is 2 plus 3J, isn't it? Now what I will do is, we will look at the case sensitivity of variables. All right. Now, when I say name equals something like Sam, name equals Sam, and name equals Sam. And print. So if you see the first name here is written in all small letters, that is lowercase. The other one is title case and the other one is uppercase. So if you look at the spelling name, name and name, all are same, storing the same values, but all of them are uh, different variables because variables are case sensitive. So now if I go and run, you should see Sam, Sam and Sam as the output. Now let's say I have to create a variable, let's say A equals 10, B equals A and I need to print the value of A, I need to print the value of B, all right? So A and B both will be 10 and 10. B is A because A is already 10, B is indirectly 10 here. Now I want to find the memory address. So here what I'll do, I'll say this is more on variables. So I'm trying to find the memory address of a variable using the ID function. So I'm gonna write ID of A, so this will return memory address of a variable. All right, so let me run and check. You see, we get some big number ending in 7304. So this is the memory address of variable A. If I try rerunning it and if I go and have ID of B, and run, you see, the ID of both A and B is actually same, that is ending in 7304. Now, why the ID is same? Because A and B are both holding the same value 10. If I also have one more variable, C equals 10, and if I say print, C also find the ID of C. So, now the question is, will the ID of C be same as that of A and B? So let's run and check. There we go, the ID of C is still same. The reason is inside the memory, there is a box created holding value 10 and all the variables that are storing value 10 will be pointing to this particular box. Hence the memory address of that particular box remains same. Now what happens if I go and do A equals 11 and then print A and also check the ID of A and run. There we go. Now you see the ID has been changed because A is no longer pointing to a box that is holding value 10. Instead, inside the memory, there is a new box created holding value 11 and A is now pointing to that box. Hence, the address changes. So this is how Python does automatic memory management. Now coming to 
variable assignment. So the first one we have is multiple variables single assignment so let me say a equals b equals c equals some value like 5 so here we have multiple variables and all of them will be holding the same value. That's why I've assigned A, B, C, all of them to five. Now here I can say A comma B comma C. And now when I go and run, you see the output should be five, five and five. This is multiple variables on single assignment. Let's go and see the other type, multiple variables and multiple assignment. So here I'll say multiple variables comma multiple assignment so for multiple variables and multiple assignment we will have different variables let's say x and we will assign multiple values let's say x is 10 y is 20 and z is 30. now i want to print x comma y comma z so if you notice below 10 and 20, we have some red squiggy line that actually indicates an error. So let me run and check. So here you see this is syntax error, invalid syntax. The reason why we are getting error is that whenever you have multiple variables and you want to assign multiple values, um, you can have x equals 10 on one single line and y equals 20 on the next line and z equals 30 on the next line. So now if I run, you see I get the output 10, 20, 30. So here actually what am I doing? I'm declaring the variables on different lines. Instead, when I have to do on the same line, all the variables should be on uh, left hand side and all the values should be on right hand side, separated by commas. So let's say x comma y comma z equals 10 comma 20 comma 30. So you see here the variables are on left hand side and the values are on right hand side. So variables will be taking the respective values. X will take value 10, Y will take 20 and Z will take 30. So now when I run, you see I get the same output 10, 20 and 30. All right. So next if I have 4, 0, 40 here. Now let's check what will be the output. So you see, I got an error that is value error that says too many values to unpack. So it is just expecting three and we got the out value four, four values, right? Why? Because here the number of variables and number of values are not same. So we need to make sure that the number of variables are equal to number of values. So in order to do that, after Z, I'll put a comma and write U. Now let's run and check what will be the output, all right? So now if I run, I get the output 10, 20, 30, again the same output. The reason why I'm, am I not getting 40 is because I'm not printing the value of u, right? So printing it depends. Out of all of them, I can just print x or print y or print z or print all of them. It should not make any difference, but the number of variables should be equal to the number of values. So now you see, because I have added U inside the print statement, 40 has been printed. So this is about variable assignments. Now what we will do is we will go to the project name, create a new Python file and name this to be data underscore types and hit enter so 
here I'll be saying that Python has wide range of data types. So the very first one that we will see is none type. All right. So let's say I have a variable A and I do not have any value to store inside it, but I'm, I want to print that A. Okay. So now let's run and check the output. So I'll click on run, click on second run and click on data types. Now you see, I get, I got the error, syntax error, invalid syntax. Obviously, there is a variable created, but we are not storing any value in it, right? So whenever we do not have any value to store in a variable, we can just go and write this none keyword. And now if I run, you see the output is none. Also, we can find what type of data is stored in a variable using the type function. So I can say print inside the print type of A. All right, so now when I go and run, you see it says it's class none type. Now, similarly, if I talk about the numeric types, if I say A equals 10, print A, and also check the type of A. So here A is the variable. And type is a function that is going to check the data type of the value stored inside A. So now when I run, you see the output is 10 class end. Similarly, I'll check if I can have any negative value. Let's say A equals minus 15, print A, and then type of A. And now when I go and run, you see the value stored in A is minus 15 and it is of integer type, that's why it gives class end. Likewise, if I say f equals 10.0, print f and print type of f. So now if I go and run, you see this is 10.0 is the value of f and it belongs to class float so that is floating point number you can even have a negative floating point number so i'll just put a negative sign over here and now when i run you see the output is class float minus 10.0 and class float similarly if i say c equals something like 3 plus 4j so we have already seen that this kind of um, data types can be stored in variables we will just check the type here once we print the variable. So print C, print type of C. So now if I run, you see this is class complex. So three here is the real part and four J is the imaginary part and J is the standard coefficient. So when I say J is the standard coefficient, let me check if is it possible to have any other character uh, except for J or other than j. For example, if I write 3 plus 4i, so you see there is a small spiggy red line below i, and now if I go and run, you see it gives me an error saying invalid decimal literal. So whenever you have to write a complex number, you should always have j as the standard coefficient. So now you see I get the output. I can also reverse this. I mean, I can first go and write something like 2j, plus 3 and I can say print C also check the type of C and now when I go and run there we go you see it automatically uh, considers 3 as the real part and 2j as the imaginary part and gives the same output 3 plus 2j and the type of it is class complex. Now let's talk about strings. So let me take, let me first display some string using the print function. So here if I say print hkr trainings, and 
and run you see i got the output as h k r trainings and if i want to specify this string uh, using a variable or if i want to store the string or assign the string to a variable i can say something like s equals i can write this h k r trainings in either single or double quotations and then i can go and print the value of variable s also now i can go and check the type of it by writing print type of variable s and now when i run you see the output is class str so str here is nothing but string now next go, let's go and see what a boolean is so boolean basically results in either true or false for example i'll take a variable let's say g equals i'll assign the value true to it and say print g and also check the type of g okay so now if i go and run you see the output is true and it's class bool you need to make sure that the t of a uh, true should be caps if i write this small you see i get an error because true that starts with capital t here is a built in so that's why you can make use of built in value and assign it uh, inside a variable so now what i can do is i can put this inside quotation so this true will no longer be true uh, that is belonging to bool class instead it will become my string right so that's why true here is a built in and i'm assigning that to a variable similarly um if you assign a value first then f has to be caps another thing what i can do here is i can just make comparison of numbers and that should give me the output in the form of true or false if i say 3 is greater than 2 so if this condition is true then it should result in true there we go this is true i can also go and check the data type of it so how do i do that if i say something like h equals and print h let me run and check so it says none so what i can do here is i can say not variable i can directly say type of 3 greater than 2 so what it will do it will just tell me uh if the class is bool there we go you see the output it says is class bool or i can say a equals 3 is greater than 2 i can print the value of a also check the type of a so again now if i run you see the output is true and class bool so this is how we can make use of booleans now we will see how to represent a number in different formats so i'm going to represent my integer number in different formats for example let's say i have to represent number a in three different formats let's say i have to represent in binary hexadecimal and octal so in order to represent our integer number 10 in binary hexadecimal and octal we have built in uh, functions so we'll try using that so i'll directly write print statement and for binary i can make use of bin if you see here it shows it's a built in all right and now i can specify the number that i want to represent in binary similarly i can say hex of 10 and oct of 10 and now when i go and run you see we get the output 0b1010 so here 0b stands for binary and 1010 is the binary representation of integer number 10 similarly 0x stands for hex and a is the hexadecimal representation of integer number 10 and 0o stands for oct and 12 is the octal representation of integer number 10 so here 
I'll change the value to 12 and 12. So for 10, it is A and 12. For 11, it will become B and 13. And for 12, it should become C and 14. Let's go and check. There we go. For hex of 12, it is 0XC. For oct of 12, it is 0O14. So this is how you can represent integer number in different formats. Now let's see how we can do type conversion. So type conversion is nothing but type casting. So that is converting one data type into another data type. So now what I will do is let's say I have to convert integer number to float. So because we have to convert integer number to float here, we first need to have an integer number stored in a variable, right? So what I'll do, I'll say a equals 10. I'm going to print and check the type of it. Though you can directly do the conversion and then check. But I first want to confirm that a is the variable that is holding my integer number. So it should say 10 and class end. Now I have to convert this 10 into float. Okay, so again, after conversion, I need to store in some variable. Let's say that variable is B. B equals float because the target here is float of A. You need not write 10 here. You should write the variable A. And then print B. Also check the type of B. So now when I run, you see the output is 10.0 and class float. Similarly, if I do the reverse, let's say I have to convert a float to int. That is floating point number to integer. So I'll take x equals. First initial value I need to have is of floating point number. So I'll say something like 10.2 print x. Also check the type of x. And Let's say y is a variable that is going to um, hold the converted result. So the target here is int. I need to first write int and then pass x to it. Now I can go and print y and also check the type of y. And now if I go and run, there we go. 10.2 has been converted to 10. And class float has been changed to end. This is how we can convert one data type into another. Now let's try converting a string to number. Let's say integer number. All right. So what I'll do is I first need to have a string, isn't it? So I'll say a equals. I'll make use of the string Python. I want to convert this into an integer number. So I'll say print A, also check the type of A. Then I'll say B equals int of A, also check, sorry, print B and also check type of B. So now let's go and see what happens. All right. So let me quickly run and see. There we go. You see the output here is value error invalid literal for int with base 10 Python. So why are we getting this error? The reason is whenever we have to do the type conversion, we cannot make use of this character string. Instead, we need to have a number string or numerical string. So what if I put something like 100 here? Okay. So this 100 here is no longer a number. This becomes my numerical string. So for conversion, you have to make use of numerical string. So now if I go and run, you see the output is 
100 was class string and now 100 has been changed to class int. This is how you can convert a string to either integer number or floating point number. Now let's try if we can convert an into complex. So for that, I first need to have an integer number. Let's say it is x equals 10, print x and print the type of x. Let's run and check. So this is my int. I have to convert this into complex. So what I'll do, I'll say y equals complex of x, print y and also check the type of y. Now let me run and check. Now you see the output is 10 plus 0j because whatever integer value we uh, give, it will be considered as the real part. And because we do not have any imaginary part, so it will automatically take 0j. Zero, 0j zero is, imagina is the imaginary part where j is the coefficient. Now let me try do doing the reverse. Let me check if I can convert a complex number to integer. So here I'll say a equals, I will have 2 plus 4j as my complex number and print a also check the type of a and then b equals here if I say int of a print b and then print the type of b. So let's run and check. So there we go, you see here, uh, it gives me an error saying b is equal to int a will not work because int argument must be string, a bytes like object or real number or not complex. So it means that we cannot convert a complex number into integer. Instead, we can convert a integer number into complex number. Now, uh, let's have uh, some dis discussion on mutable and immutable objects. So I'm gonna say mutable and immutable objects. So everything in Python is made up of object, right? So object here is a generalized term. But whereas in other programming languages, object might be a data structure or, or something else. But in Python, uh, it's a generalized term. So now we will see what mutable and immutable objects means. So let's first talk about mutable objects. So mutable objects is the sequence types. that can be changed or you can in other words says it can be modified at any point so example for this mutable objects are we have lists we have sets we have dictionary so these are the sequence types that can be changed at any point you can add elements to them you can remove elements to them or you can copy them and so on now talking about immutable objects. So immutable objects here are the sequence types that cannot be changed or cannot be modified. Cannot be changed or modified. These are unchangeable or unmodifiable. Once defined, you cannot change them. 
here we have int float that is the basic data types then coming to sequence we have strings we have tuples and also we have boolean so once defined you cannot change this basic data types or sequence types so this is known as uh, these are known as immutable objects